All right, folks, back here on the Boss Man Show. West Kentucky Hilltoppers head coach Rick Sansbury, who I've seen for years coaching his game. I got him on my show now, now in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Well, I have some friends up there as well. Coach, how's life up there for you guys in Hilltopper country, man? Well, doing okay, JR. You know, um, um, naturally, we would uh, like to warn them all. We haven't done that. You know, we're, we've been short a couple pieces. You know, don't know if we get. You know, when I'm back this week before we come to Atlanta or not, he hadn't played all year. You know, Keith Williams getting Cincinnati, so we're waiting on him. And we've had, you know, had a COVID issue, been without one of our starters, and and had another kid out injured this past Saturday. But besides that, we're good. You know, I like our team. We just got to get everybody, get everybody out there at once. I hear that, Coach. You won four in a row, um, so that's good for you guys as well. Beating a tough. EKU team, AW does a great job up there. They play fast, attacking the whole time. Then you got a, a, a tough Mac opponent coming into your house on Wednesday night. Then you come to Atlanta and play Kermit Davis and Ole Miss. So seeing your team seeing different styles, that's to help you always get ready for that conference you're going to say play here coming up here real soon. Well, you know, again, we started off so far, JR, playing a lot of different styles. You know, we opened up basically with Minnesota, you know, kind of a really controlled team. Then you got a real physical team in South Carolina. Yeah, they're going to play you. You know, then we go to Memphis and play a totally different style. Uh, people really get up into you. And like you said about East Kentucky, I think they were third in the country in attempts to make some three-pointers. So we're not going to see anybody any quicker and really any better than they did. So we've seen a lot of different styles. So uh, we got a really good Buffalo team coming in here Wednesday who basically all five starters back picked to win that max. So uh, then always, you know, Ole Miss – uh, Kermit does a great job. They got a really good team. He thinks this is one better team he's had since he's been there. Most definitely, Coach. Man, excuse me, man. Um, last year was a tough year for everybody involved, even myself being on the radio. Uh, you know, 21 wins, Coach, during a COVID year. I know I know you want the results you wanted to have was winning d- deep into March, but think about having 21 wins in a tough year as it was, how your guys put through all that adversity last year. Yeah, JR, again, um, I couldn't have asked more from our guys, but you know, one more free throw, one less turnover makes it perfect. But I don't, I don't let you know that last game, the last game determine you know, how good our team was. Um, you know, it was a challenging year. It probably affected our team more than anybody in this league because it took away from home crowds, which we were the one team in the league that would have sold out most nights. And number two. It neutralized our talent because they made us play on a Friday, Saturday night. You know, we lose two games, total three games in the league. Two of them came on a second, beat somebody on a Friday night, and you got to turn around and play them on Saturday night. And that was a huge challenge. So from all of those things, um, <clears throat> you know, that was difficult. We had some great wins, you know, you know, start the season out. And, you know, Northern Iowa and beat Memphis and, Lost that championship game to West Virginia. Went to Alabama and won. So you're in the South. You know how good they were last year and how difficult that was. But we had some we had some good wins and went to the championship game again in a conference tournament and you know got beat in overtime there. So um, it was a difficult, challenging year. And um, I was hoping all that COVID stuff was behind us. And basically, we didn't have but one COVID guy all year long. Um, we've already had. Didn't lose a starter basically all year. And we've lost a starter as we speak right now is out. So, you know, just uh, that was challenging. Uh, but at the same time, I was proud of the way our kids handled it and what they accomplished. No doubt, Coach. I know for me, when my interns were tough on me, man. So I know how I go having, having a few guys with six, six, six kids, you have 15 and, and then a support staff. So I can only imagine, because I know I had tough for more of my six. So I can only imagine seeing what how the growth of these young men have went through because I'm, I'm in my 30s, coach. I'm a little older than you guys are. But just seeing how I grew as a leader over this past year, talk about for you as well, but as long as you've been doing this, having to lead young men through something like this, you never had to lead through it before. Uh, Even like I can take you out or can take out your family members if they get it from you. So I was that trying to keep them vigilant about that because they're college kids. They want to go out and have fun, but they can't because of being safe for their team. Well, everything, everything that you um... – Learned since you was a young kid about togetherness, um, being a team. It was totally opposite this past year. 
Uh, we couldn't be together, separate, never ate meals together. Um, when we had meals, we had to separate them. Uh, we never had film last year. All film was done individually with coaches. Um, you know, we, wrote, we took two buses everywhere we went, separate on the buses. The month of February, we had 19 practices in those 28 days. 14 of them was four on zero, wow. four on O. Um, so everything about what you teach and coach, uh, it was totally different. And again, like you said, young men are young men. Uh, that's why I give our guys a lot of credit. We didn't have a case of COVID on our team until February, which tells you our guys did a great job once they had left this gym going back to their apartments, going back to their dorms, um, making the right decisions, or we they couldn't have survived that. So it was very, very challenging for everybody, fans and uh, fans and all, and showing up and having to play in, you know, you know, a thousand people in your arena when you're used for being packed, uh, that was different too. And then, like I said earlier, you compound that with playing the same team uh, back to back after you beat them the previous night. That was one of the most challenging things. No doubt. You know, as you know, I, I, I do Atlanta Hawks every day, coach. So, you know, having to play in Charlotte last night, fly, fly, fly to Minneapolis today, a two and a half hour flight. So just think about the legs of the Hawks tonight. And just and your guys are not professionals. <laughs> so, you know, I see in the, NBA, in the NBA, we call this a schedule loss tonight. If we lose, that's a schedule loss because you're having to fly two and a half hours to Minnesota after a tough game last night, and you're not really expected to win. So for you guys, college kids are not used to that pounding all the time. I can't even imagine how tough it was for you guys. It's only lose twice on back-to-backs is amazing, in my opinion, Coach. No, no, it was. And, you know, again, we had the bull's eye on our, 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 our back. We were getting everybody's best shot. And like I say, our guys deserve a lot of credit what they did and what they accomplished in a very challenging year. Um, so, um so you guys, when y'all have to travel like that, y'all look at that as a scheduling loss, huh? That yes. makes sense. Yes. That makes sense right there. Yes. Hey, yeah. if you got to fly from Atlanta to two and a half hours, look at it as a loss. If we win, it's a bonus. <laughs> but it's a schedule loss already. And you get off in that cold weather, too. That's not a little plus, either. It was – when we left Atlanta, it was six, 65 degrees, Coach. To get to Minnesota, it's 12. Yeah. At 2.24 yeah. in the morning, this morning. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be watching. I'll be watching that score tonight. When I see it, I'm gonna put that down as a schedule loss. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed, coach. You got that right. And coach, let me ask you this, man. Uh, a lot of guys have told me. A lot of players have told me how they value having a spring and summer. Now, a lot of players told me they missed getting being around each other, having a true spring and summer. How did you guys enjoy this summer? Actually, being around each other again, playing ball in the gym, and getting better with you guys, so they can be be better for this year coming up, man. Well, I know this, everybody was ready to get back, that's for sure. Everybody's ready to do it. You know, after going through last summer, you know, we didn't even have – one season was over the year before last. I mean, we got off the bus in March, middle of March after tournament year before last, and we literally didn't see each other again until uh, July. Everybody went home, separated. Um, we started bringing them back in July brought them back in two different groups in July. So there really wasn't a lot of uh, basketball previous summer. But for everybody to be able to come back in June this year, you didn't have to try to convince anybody to come back. Everybody wanted to be back after they, after they was able to go home, you know, after May. So that was good. It's all good. You know, again, we're, we're just trying to do things as normal as we can. You know, I don't, you know, I, we, we respect this virus still. It's still real out there. Uh, but again, just trying to uh, do everything as much as normal as we can. Um, you know, the only guy we had on our team that wasn't vaccinated is the guy that caught the virus. Whether it has anything to do with it or not, I don't know. Uh, but everybody else has been vaccinated, and I don't, I don't know. You know, because you're vaccinated, don't keep you from catching it. That's for sure. So, uh, but hopefully. You know, worst of it's behind us, and we can keep moving forward and being normal through all this. 
and coach your ass to talk about coming to Atlanta, man. Holiday hoops giving. Uh, Atlanta has a lot of talent down there for you guys. You know, West Kentucky's not that far from home down here in Atlanta. So a young man may see you all play this weekend at the Hawks Arena on the Hawks floor there and see, want to come play for you, man. Tell me about bringing your team to see like Atlanta to play in an event like, like this on Saturday, man. Well, there's no question. Um, you know, Georgia and Atlanta is one of the most fertile recruiting states and cities there is in, in America. So, like you said, it is pretty close. We're four hours away. Um, you know, and you know, I spent a lot of time in Atlanta area through my years. I've always loved coming over there and playing. You know, we had that SEC tournament there many a year. Um, you remember back, was part of that tornado game. Back in whatever year that was. I was a ball boy, Coach. Well, you were a ball boy? I was a ball boy there, Coach. I remember that vividly. I was a ball boy. Was you there tonight? We were playing Alabama when a tornado hit? I sure was. All right, yep. So there's a lot of a lot of memories from all that, good and bad. So then having to go play to finish the tournament out at Georgia Tech the next day with no fans, that was a challenge. But um, you all put together a great, you know, a great tournament down there. You got a lot of great teams. Um, you know, and uh, anybody out there that wants to see good basketball, you need to go buy a ticket and watch good basketball all day long. Because there's eight really good teams coming into there. And uh, again, we're we're happy to be a part of it. We know we're playing a really, really good Ole Miss team. Yeah, coach, you know what's funny? Like my father was a football coach. So, you know, I've been around sports my whole life. So I want to ask you, man, I never want to be in coaching. I, I saw how my dad was stressed. I You're a smart guy. A, you smart guy. <laughs> I want to be in radio. So tell me, where, where point did you decide you want to get into coaching and help young men uh, grow and be, become better, better, better players and play better men going forward, man? Well, you know, JR, where, where I was from, you know, I grew up in Kentucky. Uh, I grew up just not in Kentucky, but out in the country. You know, and uh, when I grew up, um, there wasn't anything else to do where I was from. I worked on a farm, I hunted, I fished, I played basketball. Uh, basketball was part of who I was. Don't know how I became um, such a love for it, uh, but when you're in that state, and that year, that's years ago, it's, even, it's different now. You know that, there's so many other different distractions now. But just grew up loving the sport. You know, my dad, he didn't play college, played high school, but was always encouraging as a young kid to play basketball. But it was just something I, I, I took up with. And I found a passion about it. I found a love for it. And I went to work. That's all I did. <clears throat> as I said, I worked on a farm, hunted and fished and played basketball. You know, found a way to get to college. Um, and again, I knew at a pretty early age in college, you know, I loved the game so much uh, that I wanted to be a part of it. After your first few years playing, you get closer to the end of your career, you realize you're not going to play for the Atlanta Hawks, and you got to be able to figure out what, it's, what you're going to do. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I knew basketball is part of my life, and I, I love, you know, I love being around it. And coaching was a way around it. So I was blessed to be able to get a GA job right after that. And, you know, and I've been tunnel vision most of my life until I got married and I had blinders on. It was all basketball 24-7. I didn't get married until I was about 38 and I put a little bit of balance in my life. But, you know, I've been blessed to be able to do something that I've loved to do, that I love. Um, it's always been easy. As you well know, Starkville, Mississippi, 20 some odd years, not easy, JR. Oh, yeah. um, but we were blessed. We were blessed there. And um, um, so, you know, I don't know if everybody can in life, um, you talk to so many people, you know, when they get out of college, they just got to get jobs. And a lot of people end up doing things to, that they don't really love to do, but they do it for money. That was good. You know, I didn't get into coaching for money, uh, that's for sure. Uh, I was blessed, blessed the way it turned out, uh, but I would have starved to death my first several years in coaching. Uh, nowadays, uh, you know, nowadays people, most people are not willing to sacrifice like you used to. You know, they want to start at the top and it's the way it is. So 
basketball's been a been great for me, and I've you know and been a part of a lot of young men's lives, a lot of family lives. That's who my life is. It's basketball. Um, my best friends and uh, best relationships all been formed through basketball. Coach, you're so right because you know what, Coach, for me was for me as a four year old kid, Coach, going to meet. Frankie Allen and Anthony Mason for the first time in my life at four years old from Atlanta. You know, it gave me something other than what I grew up around. You know, I grew up in the worst part of the city, Coach. I ain't gonna lie to you about that, but the worst part of Atlanta. So for me, football and basketball gave me an outlet to get out of the hood, to be able to who I am today. So I thank Frankie Allen giving me time. Coach Randy Peel giving me time going to Bay basketball camps as a young kid, you know. Randy Peel, where was Randy Peel at then? Over at Greensboro. Then he was at Winthrop. So when I was that yep. younger. So, yeah. So, and I still talk to him to this day. All these guys who talk to this day, um, you know, uh, Jamal Brown, Silas, and all those guys who was a, helped me as a child. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, and yep. my first job, Coach, was, was in Memphis covering that beat. So I covered some of your games in Starkville back when I was there as, as a young reporter. <laughs> I got you. I got you. So, yeah, man. So, I'm right with you, Coach, man. It's a passion for me as well. Like, I love this business. Because, yeah, Coach, then when the Hawks lose, it doesn't bother me as much. Because I don't take, take the stress of the loss. That's <laughs> right. You know, but, but I enjoy being around it. it, though. You're around it. You still got athletes in your life. You still got young men around you every day. But like you said, you ain't got to take that stress back to that hotel room at nighttime. <laughs> hey, I, and we lost last night to the Hornets. I'm on the, on the, I'm on the plane. I'm, this is, I'm, 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 I'm a good mood. I'm watching my homeless play. <laughs> and that's why I'm good. <laughs> you, you need to step back, back in that plane, stay away from the coaches then. Oh, you, you already know. I'm way in the back. <laughs> I'm yeah. way in the back. Well, Coach Stansberry, it's, it's good pleasure to have you on the show, man. For the seeing you this, this weekend here in Atlanta, man. I've always been a fan of yours for years, man. I'm happy at WKU. Now, I have a house in Nashville still. So when I'm in, I'll check out my house, get off the, off the area, I'm going to give you my phone and I'll come up there and see you, man. Man, you're welcome up here anytime, JR. Make sure to come by the hotel there Friday night before the game. We'll see you at the game Friday night. We'll do it, do, Coach. Thanks so much, man. Thank you, man. Yep. All right.